The most ridiculous thing about C.J. Stroud MVP talk, why Sunday is and is not a trap game, and why C.J. Stroud might have to do it again. We'll tell you what it is, and we'll hear from the man himself in the locker room. Yeah. Yeah. It's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey. Locker room. Yeah, we Most ridiculous room. thing about C.J. Stroud MVP talk. Get into that in a sec. We'll hear from the man himself. I'll tell you why this is and is not a trap game. And oh my gosh, he's going to have to do it again. Tell you what it is in a sec. Locker room number one source for Texans daily digital content. I'm Landry Locker. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 Central on Sports Radio 610 and the Odyssey app. Uh, Robert Woods joining the show tomorrow straight off of uh, the practice field. Uh, another exclusive interview on uh, In the Loop on Sports Radio 610, Twitch, YouTube, Etc. The CJ Stroud MVP talk, it's unavoidable. It's not just a local thing, it's a national thing. And the silliest thing to me about this is, is something that I've heard from people who voted on the award before. I say people, uh, one person, and I've heard this dialogue come up uh, whenever it's being discussed the fact that he's just a rookie. I was talking to John McClain on Tuesday. Is he going to win MVP? No, he's a rookie. Why the hell should that matter? If you want to lay out the case for, you want to lay out the case against, that's cool. What the hell does him having a rookie, being a rookie have to do with anything? I'm not saying that's not the way it is, but I'm saying that's that's the way it should not be. It should not be that way. That's stupid. That doesn't make any sense. So he's a rookie, so what does that mean? Are we just assuming that three years from now, two years from now, five years from now, he's going to be playing this same caliber of ball? Or he's going to improve? I mean, there's there's reason to believe that he might, but why would you assume that? If he's up there statistically with the rest of the guys, why does it matter if he's a rookie or not? Watch the damn games, evaluate the guy, and start discussing why he is or is not a rookie or why he is or is not the, the MVP. The, the rookie thing makes no sense. Why the hell is that even a mindset? That's that's the blowhard crap that we got used to around here with Bill O'Brien. Rookies just don't know anything. They can't play. Those days are gone. Texans are relying on a lot of rookies. But why is it that the voters have that same blowhard mindset and, and that's okay? He's a rookie. Okay. Statistically, he's stacking up with these other guys. Now, if I had an MVP vote, I'd vote for Christian McCaffrey. And I can understand the case for all the candidates. And there's, there's going to be some stuff that you use for and against each MVP candidate. But a rookie shouldn't mean a damn thing. That's just dumb. It is the Locker Room number one source for Texans daily digital content. I'm Landry Locker. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 Central on Sports Radio 610 in the Odyssey app. Rookie. That's so dumb. Sunday is a trap game, but it's not a trap game. And uh, allow me to explain this. I've talked about how... I think the Arizona Cardinals are, are a scary team. And the betting line has dropped down from, I think, six to four. And when you talk about this game, sometimes you hear people talk about, and, and, and I've got a lot of listeners, a lot of people in the comments talk about, you know, the Carolina game. And, you know, Arizona's only won two games. That's a dangerous thing to look at and just say that they won two games because they 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 won they won one game with Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray has started one game this year. And Arizona's been extremely competitive. Now, if this were Clayton Toon, I th there would not be as much nerves as there is with Kyler Murray. But to look at the the win-loss record with Arizona and say the Texans at 5 and 4 should mop the floor with Arizona because Arizona's won two games, I, I don't think that's acknowledging what Arizona currently is and what they didn't have before. If the Texans lose this game, I think it's because Arizona is a scrappy, good squad with a quarterback that has potential to make plays. I don't think it's some over-romanticized, they overlooked Arizona and this was a trap. Because I don't think this is a true two-win uh, two team that they're facing. And sometimes I think when we talk about trap games, a lot of times it's just revisionist history and it's over romanticizing and trying to explain why a loss happened. If Tex, if the Texans lose to Arizona, it's because Kyler Murray went out there and balled. I don't think they lost to Carolina because they were overlooking him. I think it was a, 
C.J. Stroud's worst performance. I think it was arguably Bobby Slowick's worst performance. But did they eat the cheese? I don't know. I don't think they're going to eat the cheese. I don't think D'Amico Ryans is going to let them. So when you talk about trap games, do I think that the Texans could lose this game? Absolutely. I think it's going to be a competitive game. But do I think it's going to be because they somehow overlooked it and some sort of like mental thing that we talk about? No, I don't. So tomato, tomato, trap game, not a trap game. Noah Brown, he missed practice again. Noah Brown is the second highest rated receiver in the last few weeks since he returned to the lineup. Uh, coming off a career day uh, in which C.J. Stroud relied on him in very crucial situations and Noah Brown lit up the stat sheet, uh, Noah Brown could miss the game. And it's the same old, same old for C.J., might have to do it again. What is it? Perform without one of his weapons. It's what C.J. Stroud has done. It's what he's had to do. He won a game without Noah Brown. He won games without Noah Brown. Multiple games against good teams. Jacksonville and Pittsburgh. He's won a game without Tank Dell. Saints game. Won a game without Nico Collins. The last one. Against Cincinnati. So C.J. Stroud might have to do it again. Soon as one of his weapons gets extra hot, got to do his thing without him. Now, does that add to the MVP case? Maybe so. I think if a non-rookie did this, I think it would come into consideration. He's doing more with less. Uh, he's been without his weapons. Maybe those blowhards are still focused on that whole rookie bit. Who knows? Regardless, C.J. Stroud is going to have to do it again. Let's hear from the man himself, though. Let's hear from C.J. Stroud. Texans versus Cardinals Sunday. Kyler Murray coming to town. Texans in the playoff picture. Uh, Jacksonville next week. A lot of momentum right now. C.J.'s begging for a packed house. Let's hear what he had to say when he addressed you know, the media. So, uh, for me, I just want to really want to keep getting better and better um, and, and keep that chip on my shoulder and just keep and keep grinding. C.J., I know a lot of the, the, you know, the personal accolades. How good does it feel to see Devin Singletary win AFC South Player of the Week? I definitely feel like week. he deserved it. He, he, he's somebody who works or his tail AFC off, man. He's, offensive um, player of he's the came week. a long way in his career, all the way back at FAU to here. You know, and he's always been a really good back. But, you know, people have always doubted him, um, his size and everything. But, I mean, he proves people wrong. Um, it proves himself right consistently, you know. So um, it's somebody that I, that I ride for. Uh, definitely is a brother of mine. I love him to death. He's a great dude. Um, and and I, I know that uh, he's going to continue to work and, and be resilient like he's always been. And um, I'm really proud of him, and I can't wait to see his career go on and on. I hope I can play many, many years with, with Motor. Um, yeah, that's my brother. D'Amico's biggest impact. Uh, yeah, I think his just in his um, attention to detail, um, his decisiveness on making decisions, and um, I also think that like the standard that he holds, not only for himself but for us as a team, like he keeps it at that standard, and he lets us know when we're not when we're not looking right or uh, when we need to pick it up and things like that. And he's not a he's not a a mean cuss and I appreciate that because like um, if uh, coaches cuss. like that like cool they're like that you deal with it you understand who that's a them as a person cuss. but he's not like that so he doesn't ever try to get out of character which as a man you can respect you know because like you can tell when a coach is faking it and trying to yell and that, that's not really them so like for him like he holds us at a standard in his way um, on letting us know with great communication you know on picking things up and then he praises guys as well which a lot of coaches sometimes don't do either so um, he has a good balance on how he does both and um, he's done a great job of just leading us by attention to detail and really focusing on the little things. So um, he's definitely, definitely uh, been been amazing when it comes to stuff like that. CJ, along those same lines, where do you want to be felt? How do you want to be felt uh, amongst your team? Um, when we ask them, you know, how CJ impacts you guys, aside from football, but just uh, the day in and day out process. How do you want to be looked at as a leader? You talk about D'Amico's style of leadership. How do you want to be looked at? 
as a leader? Um, I, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, you know. So like, I would say, you know, you got to go ask them. Like, I don't want to ever come up here and say I want to be this way or that way. Um, and like their their whole dynamic on who I am is different, you know. So um, and I, the main thing I want to be is just something somebody they can trust, you know, some trustworthy person um, and, and somebody who, who they know they can trust through thick and thin. And I think that's where it starts for me, you know, it starts and ends. Because um, you can put a whole different, like you can put 50 categories in that word of trust on what they trust you for, you know. So um, for me, that's probably the biggest thing. But I would say, man, you got to ask them, like, I don't want to ever, like, force myself on anybody or, like, uh, make it feel like just because I'm the quarterback, you guys got to follow my lead, you know. I want it to be natural and thorough. Um, and I feel like, um, of course, I feel like I've done that a little bit, but I'm still trying to keep that going, you know. So um, it's been amazing just having them have my back through everything. And um, every time I address the team or have something to say, they always listen. And I think I'm building it, you know. So um, it's been pretty cool to see. Um, it's been amazing. It's been good. It's been a dream come true. It's been hard. And it's been I'm being a quarterback. Challenging and, um, it's, it's been everything that I've asked for and, and more, you know. So being an NFL quarterback isn't easy. Um, but it, um, that's why I feel like I was chosen to, to take on this role. And um, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to do my best as I can. And I'm blessed enough to have the support system around me from my family to my teammates to the front office to my coaches to my teammates. Like everybody around me has been helping a lot. And I feel like uh, I'm trying to do the same with them as well, you know, so. Did the tape, the stats, and the, uh, even the advanced stats show how open Noah Brown is? What is it about him that makes him such a about to talk about Noah Brown, which sucks because Noah Brown did not uh, practice. He's been really today. intelligent. He's been very smart. Um, he comes from a different type of offense, but um, football is football. And he's been able to just be a ball player. Um, he, he feels coverage really well. He knows when to break. He knows like when to cut cut things, um, and, and he blocks his tail off too. Like I think that's something he's very, very great at, and that's what kind of helps him get open and play action and things like that. Um, and uh, He's been amazing. He's been a, a safety blanket ever since he's gotten back. I know it feels like every week we have one receiver out, and um, Noah and like Tank and Nico and Rob, Hutch, Mitch, they all step up every week, you know. So um, that's some. And Noah is, is definitely been a uh, leader in that room, and he's not a, a man of many words, but he's a leader of example, which is really helpful. Um, but yeah, he's very intelligent, very smart, and I'm really proud of him, and can't wait to keep playing with him, and um, uh, really excited to see what he does for the rest of the year. MVP chatter and really how hard are you on yourself? Um, I'm honest with myself. At least I, I try to be, man. Even when I'm, I try to get myself the leeway. My coaches don't allow me to. So um, it's a great balance that we have. And when we watch film, and we're just brutally honest with each other, hold each other accountable. Um, and I, I, I feel like I, I make some plays, but it's some things that I like. I still need to get better on for sure. You know, um, and I feel like it's everybody every week. Um, this game is 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 a is a trustworthy game, and it, 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 excuse me, it's a um, it, it keeps you honest and it keeps you humble. It, um, you know, so it's a humbling game, and it makes you really, really look at yourself in the mirror and see did you prepare the right way, did you do this the right way, because um, everything will be um, tested on that Sunday. The honest God don't lie, you know. So um, it, it's been it's been cool to be able to be in a talk, but like just like they hate, they love me this week, they hate me the next. So I don't try to look at that stuff. I try to stay even kill and just stay on a straight and narrow um, and, and just work really hard and, and um, make my teammates around me better. So, right. how's you guys? Right. Thanks. All right, so nothing on uh, the Arizona Cardinals, nothing on uh, Kyler Murray, uh, at least that, that I heard. So, so there we go. Um, CJ Stroud, uh, I mean, okay, whatever. Uh, Ravens, Bengals tonight, this is big. Uh, some people... Look at this as maybe you can gain a game on the Ravens. Uh, I look at it as gain some separation from the Bengals. I think the Bengals are a threat. They're a battle-tested squad. Um, if you can get ahead of them in the uh, in the loss column, I think that would be beneficial for the Texans. There's, there's a lot of games of interest this uh, week from a localized perspective. Steelers versus Browns. Browns without Deshaun Watson. They go from team that you think can compete with anyone to they're going to have to scratch and claw to get in the playoffs like the Steelers, the Chargers are still in the mix. Uh, don't know if the Packers can do the Texans a solid, but that would be nice. 
Uh, Dolphins maybe knock the Raiders back a little bit. They've kind of got some momentum. And then Titans, Jags, don't sleep on this. These are the types of games Vrabel wins. Uh, we'll see what happens before the Texans take on the Jags and then the Jets and Bills right there in that mix as well. So there's a lot to look at. Be sure to subscribe, like, right along. It is the Locker Room, number one source for Texans daily digital content. I'm Landry Locker. Uh, what do you think about C.J. Stroud MVP talk? Do you think the rookie thing should matter? Uh, how important is it going to be to not have – Noah Brown. And are you um, looking at this as potentially a trap? Yes or no? Put it in the comments. Subscribe, like, ride along. And always remember, when it comes to this Texan stuff, we're all in it together. Thanks for coming through. Game in the headlock. Localize every time. Can't stop. Won't stop. Yeah. We top two and we not two. Plugged in daily. daily.